Hello, everyone. Welcome to our weekly YouTube channel series where we work with women who want to share their life stories and turn their pain into purpose and become motivational speakers. So my name is Krista Kathleen. I am a public speaking coach and hypnotherapist, and this is my partner in crime, Monica. Hey, I'm Monica Hutchinson. I am a real talk and public speaking coach with Perfectly Imperfect Coaching. Okay. okay, and today we have a really exciting video for you. It's called Top Tips for Rockin' Facebook Lives That Get You Paid. Yeah. Okay, we realize how important it is to do Facebook Lives in your business so that way you increase your visibility, people can hear your story, and then they're going to want to work with you. They're going to want to hire you, and so many opportunities are going to start to open up. So we have some amazing tips for you that's going to help you get started really quick. These tips are really easy and actionable, and so I'm going to let Monica take over. Yeah, so first of all, some of this has to do with the setup. So we're going to talk a little bit about setting it up during the call and then afterwards things you can do. So the first thing that you can do is you want to have a clear background and really good lighting. You want to make sure, kind of like what I have going on, that this is completely clear of anything that's moving because you don't want to have that wobble effect that takes away from the professionalism. Now there are times where maybe you're outside and you want to highlight the scene behind you, but that's kind of just takes a little bit away from the professionalism. So use that when you're trying to create a different kind of effect and then have your phone somewhere still or you know, your laptop, whatever it is that you're using, use a pop socket or a tripod, or make sure that you have it stacked up on something so it's at a good level and people can see your face. As far as your clothing as well, you wanna make sure that you keep things pretty simple and don't have a lot of patterns because that actually can create dizziness for the eye when people are looking at you on camera and you've got like a bunch of polka dots or checkers or something like that. Krista, I'd love to hear from you about the lighting because I know that's totally your jam. Definitely, yeah. Lighting is so important. You wanna make sure that you're not like hiding back in the shadows because people aren't gonna to wanna to watch and it's not gonna look professional. So I have my three-point lighting system set up right now. I actually only have two of them. I have one on each side and then I do have the natural window light coming in on me right now. So. I'll drop a link in the description section below of the three point lighting system you can buy on Amazon. I'll give a couple different options as well. The one that I purchased was about, I think it was about 70 bucks, but it's great too. Also, if you do photography, you can use that as well, but it's really important to have good lighting. And you also want to make sure too, you don't want to have windows behind you because if the natural sunlight's coming from behind, it's going to shadow you out here. So yeah, lighting is essential. Yeah, definitely. And I know one other thing I noticed with lighting too, if you haven't gotten to purchase something yet with Facebook lives, they do offer you a couple different filters that you can try out. I don't have my own lighting system yet. So I tend to use the filters and that brightens my face up. There's an option in there that you can try out different ones that kind of like when you take selfies, you can put a filter on that and that can be your makeshift until you get your lighting system in place. The second one about what you can do before you do your Facebook Live is to check your tech. So, so important. And even with the best laid plans, sometimes stuff's gonna go wrong and that's okay. People are real, we're authentic, we are flawed and technology is flawed. So if you're in the middle of a live and everything goes crashing down, it's okay to just end it and then restart it. When it comes to checking your tech, something I just learned recently from someone is that you could put your phone in airplane mode, and that actually helps you from getting kicked off of the live if somebody calls you, especially if you're doing something kind of like what Krista and I are doing right now and you've got an interview going on. If they get a call, it's going to kick them off the live. So putting your phone in airplane and maybe asking them to do so can alleviate some of those issues. Krista, what's coming up for you on checking your tech? Yeah, so let's talk about sound. So I am not actually using it right now because I'm at my parents' house, but usually I'll use a little lavalier microphone that you know you can clip right here. And I got it for like 25 bucks off the Amazon, but it's really great again to have good sound because if you sound muffled or 
the audio is not there, people aren't going to want to watch your videos. So yeah, I'll drop a link to that shows you a good microphone that you can use that's really inexpensive and is going to really up the quality of your Facebook lives. Man, all these awesome resources you're throwing at us. This is amazing. I love it. Okay, so you've set up, everything's good to go. And now you're actually doing your Facebook live. You really want to be natural with your body and smile a lot. Smiles create that engagement with people and that connection. And this is why going live is a powerful addition. If you're someone who writes a lot, that's awesome. Going live lets your audience get to know you on a more personal level. One thing Chris and I have talked about before is if you're someone who plays with your hair, get it off your face. You can see Krista did that today. I'm trying a new thing out with like a bobby pin and it's still mm -hmm. kind of there. So I might do something different later, but make sure your hair is out of your face. You're going to be looking at yourself in your phone or at your laptop. So you'll be able to see if you're doing a little bit of swaying. Just make sure that you are using natural body movement. If you're someone who uses your hands, that's cool, but you don't have to overdo it. Just think about what resonates with you when you're watching somebody else. What about you, Krista? Yeah, so another thing I wanted to cover is when you're giving your Facebook Live, you want to make sure that you're not reading from a script. Right? It's so easy to tell when someone is just going down and reading the bullet points or just reading word for word. You know, Monica and I are public speaking coaches. We help women craft their speeches all the time. We can tell when someone's reading from their notes and when they're not. And the audience can tell as well because it just doesn't feel as natural. It doesn't feel authentic. So you really want this to feel like a natural conversation. So if you're nervous about going off the script, which most people are, one tip that I've learned recently, and I'm excited to try this, is to put pictures for the outline of your speech or your talking points, okay? Because our brain remembers pictures so much easier than it can remember sentences or paragraphs. So try that. You know, you can have your paper and just put it to the side here, and then just put pictures that's going to jog your memory of what you want to talk about next. And then that way you can be very connected and engaged with the audience and you're not going to lose them. Yeah, I love that. I want to try that out as well too. It's such an interesting little tip. And part of my formula really is just to think it, say it and do it. People overthink what they say in Facebook lives or like it has to be this formal speech, but that's actually the beauty of Facebook lives is it doesn't need to be formal. Sometimes I'll be walking my dogs and be like, okay, I've got an idea. I'll think it, I'll say it out loud, try out the words, and then I'll just do it. It's going to be what it's going to be. And people resonate with that authenticity of it not being perfect. Another thing when you are doing your Facebook Live is to acknowledge your audience. Mm -hmm. And people get a little bit nervous about this, but it's not too hard. Facebook makes it actually pretty easy to do. When people show up in your feed and it shows up that they're watching, there's a little button that says wave. I try to just click that button every time sh someone shows up on the call to make sure they know that I'm there. And then or that I know that they're there. And then also I'll try and acknowledge them out loud as well and be like, hey, Krista, so you joined the call, drop me a comment. And Krista, I know you have some ideas too on things you can do to engage with your audience while I'm on the Facebook Live. Yeah, ask people lots of questions. And this is where if you're a coach, you can really practice using your powerful questioning. One of the uh, first good question to ask as people are coming on is like, oh my gosh, tell me what part of the world you're coming in from. And then people get really excited to tell you where they're from. And you can show, oh my gosh, we got someone in the house from Japan. We got someone in the house today from Hawaii. Wow, this is amazing, right? So you want to get people involved and get people excited. And again, you know, ask them questions and tell, you know, tell people what to do too. Like if something really important has come up, I'll be like, okay, everyone, write this down, grab your notes, write this down. And Monica and I are both trainers as well. So we really like telling people what to do and, and having people be a part of the conversation or else they get lost so easily. And, you know, some other questions I'll say is like, you know, tell me what you think about that. What's your thoughts? What's your opinions on what I just shared? I'll do that in a regular coaching call as well. But again, you really want your audience to feel like you're talking with them and you're not talking at them. 
Exactly. And people get so freaked out about just staring at themselves and feeling like they're so alone. The more that you ask questions or engage with your audience, the more you're going to feel like they are there with you. It's something that comes up with any kind of virtual training or virtual presenting. So just remember, the more you interact, the better engagement you're going to get from them, too. Yeah. Okay. One okay. more thing is at the end, too, don't forget to tell people what to do. So tell them, who do you know that needs to watch this right now? Or who do you know that needs to hear this message? Tag them in the video. Share this video with them. All right, again, tell, don't be afraid to be bossy here. Tell people what to do. And then, Monica, were you going to go into call to actions or... Actually, you kind of led right into that with the call to action is exactly what Krista said. Leave them with something to think about or to feel or to do, or maybe it's you're directing them to your website or a program you have upcoming. Maybe you're offering some sort of special offer or discount or you know some kind of service that's new and exciting that you really want to talk with people about. Or maybe it's that you just want them to put in the comments what the biggest thing was that they got from your video. Make sure that you ask them and you can even follow up afterwards, which we're going to get into in a minute, after the video in the comments and say, hey, here's the question or here's what I asked you to do. Having that follow up afterwards is super important too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So when we talk about moving into the after, you finished your live and now we're after the fact. There are multiple different things you can do to still engage with the people that were on your live or people maybe who missed it. One of the things that I like to do, and I know Krista does this too, is to go back and engage with people's comments afterwards. So I'll go pretty much like all of them, even if I acknowledge them verbally on the recording, I'll just be like, hey, thanks for being here. So glad you joined. Or if they asked a question, even if I verbally acknowledged it on the Facebook Live, I'll still go write an answer to their question in the comments. You can also ask people to put hashtag replay in the comments when they watch, and that way you get a notification to come back and see their comments. And that's great for people who missed it while it was live. Which leads me to talk about hosting a live party, which is kind of cool. There's actually an option when you go to share the Facebook Live after the fact that says host a watch party. And that shows up and gives a notification to people who are following you that says, hey, Monica's hosting a watch party for this video. And it shows up just like it's another live. It kind of replays live just like it was going live before. So another awesome way to allow for your audience to engage with you. Krista, how about you? What do you like to do after the fact? Yeah, well, I wanted to also talk about the Facebook algorithm, which I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. And we're not going to go into all the details about that because there's a lot of rules and stuff. But one of the most important things you can do is, like Monica said, is by going back and liking things and commenting on people's things. And then by also having people engage and comment, it's going to boost your video up in the algorithm and then it's going to get shared and watched more and more because you don't want it to be at the bottom of the Facebook newsfeed. So again, that's why it's really important to ask questions, get people involved in commenting, um, liking and sharing, and then you going back and commenting and engaging stuff. Again, we want to remind you, this is social media. It's okay to be social with your audience. Um, and then, okay, so going into some actual steps that you can do afterwards, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, for years, I didn't do anything with my Facebook videos. Like I was going live all the time. I love doing Facebook Lives and that was it. I would stop there. And what I've learned is I was wasting so much potential. And what I mean by that is, hold on, let me just bring up my notes here. Okay, so of, of a huge reason why we're doing these Facebook Lives is, especially as business owners and coaches, is we want to potentially find clients from doing our Facebook Lives. That's why we talked about getting paid in the title today. And how you can do that is pay attention to who shows up to your Facebook Lives because you are going to be doing these consistently. We do want you to set a goal of you know, every week I'm going to do at least one Facebook Live on Thursdays or I'm going to do three Facebook Lives a week. You, you can't just do a Facebook Live once and be done. It's the same with exercising. You have to keep doing it consistently to get results. So pay attention to who starts showing up to your content and who's engaging a lot. That means they really like you and they're probably going to make a good potential client. So when I start seeing that happen, I'll personally reach out 
to these people and message them and say, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to engage in my content. It means the world to me. And I start to build up that relationship and get to know them. And then after we talk for a little bit, if I feel like it's a good fit, then I invite them onto a discovery call with me. Or I talk about, you know, my latest upcoming event or group program if I think they'd be a good fit. And this is honestly how I filled up a lot of my group coaching programs back in the day. And, and we still do. So it, a lot of times people feel weird about that, but I think it's a great way of being direct, putting yourself out there and starting to build up relationships online. And then my last tip is that every, you need to have content. You need to have good content as a business owner because your content's going to be your marketing and it's going to build the no like and trust factor. So what you can do is you can download your Facebook video and upload it to YouTube. So then you have a video for your YouTube channel and then you can send that link out to your email list and tell them you have a new video and then create a call to action in that email. And so again, you want to make sure that you're doing stuff with your Facebook lives afterwards. Don't do it and just leave it. So yeah. Anything else you wanted to add, Monica? No, I think we've covered all the really big ones. And if you've got an additional tip that you use with your Facebook Live, we'd love to know about it in the comments as well, because I know that I just learned the thing about putting your phone on airplane mode when I was talking about this the other day. So we're always getting new things too. So share your favorite ones or what resonated with you as well in the comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a million more details we could have gone into, but the human brain can only hold so much new information. So we picked out the things we thought was the most important for you right now to get started with rocking out your Facebook lives. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all we have for today. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel because we're going to keep uploading new videos every week and they're going to be packed with so much valuable content that's going to help you to become more visible in your business and your life, which is going to help you to get hired and create so many other opportunities. And speaking of that, Monica and I actually have our second event coming up for 2019. Actually, I'm going to correct myself. It's 2020. <laughs> we have our Clearwater Beach, Florida retreat that's going to be at the end of January of 2020. And we're looking for 10 passionate women who are ready to start turning their mess into their message. We want women who have powerful life stories and they really want to learn how to use those life stories in a way to inspire others and to create an impact and to potentially, you know, create books from this and podcast interviews and to become paid motivational speakers. And so, yeah, this retreat, it's going to be so epic. This is the third time I'm leading this retreat. It's the first time Monica is leading it with me. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing because you're just going to be surrounded by positivity and you're going to leave this retreat, like remembering this event for the rest of your life, because this is going to get you started. This is going to get you stepping outside your comfort zone and going bigger in life. And Monica, I know you haven't been on it yet, but do you want to add like what you're most excited about for this retreat? Oh, I'm just excited to be there, first of all, in Florida in January, coming from Colorado where it's been nine all week. But also, I am so psyched to get to see the transformation in all of you women who join us and who do your speeches because you're going to get an opportunity to do it multiple times and implement feedback right away. And just even seeing, Chris and I are running our Fearless Public Speaking Academy right now, seeing the women in there tell their stories, their powerful, powerful stories, and then improving as every week goes by is such an incredible experience. And adding into that, getting to actually see that live is even more powerful because then you actually get more of the body language and inflections and getting to see someone in person is a whole different energy. So I am so psyched to get to be in that space with Krista and all the other awesome women who are going to be with us. Love it. Okay. So just so you all know, we're only inviting 10 women in. We already have four spots accounted for, meaning we only have six spots left. So we're going to drop the application form in the comments. You're going to want to apply as soon as you can because the early bird rate ends December 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to save the most amount of money and save your spot, then you want to apply now. 
and then we'll set up an interview with you just to make sure it's a good fit for both of us. And then we can all hang out together at the end of January in Florida and yes, be on the tropical beach and drink margaritas together and basically learn how we're going to take over the world. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all we have for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining and following along. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.